Hey yo, what is up guys? Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I'm a second year medical student at King's College London and I make these videos once a week to try and help you guys throughout the application process. I'm coming to you live from Amman, Jordan, the big J-O. I'm here to visit my family that I haven't seen in quite a long time and I'm also gonna be sorting out some military stuff, renewing my passport, my national ID card, etc., etc. We're currently on our Christmas break at KCL in second year of medical school. Just over the last two days, I've gotten a about 10 messages from people telling me that they've received offers for King's College London Medicine. I can't believe it, that's so exciting. Well done to all you guys, congratulations. I'm sure you guys smashed the interviews if you've been getting your offers. And to everybody else waiting for an offer, have patience, have, have faith, it's a bit of a process and as long as you haven't heard back from the medical school, you're still in the running, they're still considering your application. So don't give up, have some faith, be patient, and hopefully more offers come through. If you do get offers, please do let me know. It's so cool to be able to follow you guys through the journey from studying for the UK CAT and the BMAT, sending in your applications, getting interviews, and now actually receiving offers. That's something that really keeps me going, keeps me motivated to make these videos. So if you guys do receive any offers, please do let me know. So yeah guys, thought I'd record a video here as well. I'm coming to you with my full scruffy beard some traditional Arabic tea and also my traditional Arab robe. Probably looking like a big fat black bear right now, but bear with me as we get through this MMI video. So today the topic that I wanna cover is how do you deal with stress or how do you cope with nerves or stress at an MMI interview or before a big presentation or anything like that. I know I am one hell of a stressful person when it comes to giving presentations or doing interviews or anything like that. So I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about my experience, how I tend to deal with stress, how I cope with it, some tips and tricks that you guys can use before your MMI interviews as well. And without further ado, in this very traditional Arab clothing, let's get right into the video. All right, so let me take you guys back to 2013 when I was applying to medical school for the first time out of uh, Athens, Greece, and I was applying to the UK for medical school. I applied to Cambridge, Edinburgh, King's, and Imperial all the top schools that I could think of at the time. I ended up getting rejected from everywhere, but I got an interview at Cambridge. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to prepare for interviews. I didn't know how to get myself ready. I didn't know what kinds of questions I might be asked. So basically what I did was just studied my biology textbook, which in retrospect was a horrible idea. Obviously the interview is about a lot more than just your knowledge of biology. Um, but anyway, that's why I did, because I didn't know what I was doing and I ended up bombing the interview. But the key point is that I didn't bomb the interview because I studied the wrong things, although it definitely wasn't the best thing to do. The reason that I bombed the interview was because of my stress and my nerves. I'm somebody who is very psychosomatic, so my brain affects my body. If I'm feeling anxious or if I'm feeling stressed out, then I start to sweat, I start to shake, my stomach starts to feel uncomfortable. I just get a full on reaction to feeling stressed out, as do a lot of other people, I'm sure. So the point of this video is to try and learn from my mistakes so that that doesn't happen to you guys in your interviews. Quick side note about the Cambridge interview. One of the first questions that they asked me was to explain to them how blood flows through the heart. Of course, that's something super simple. That's something that I knew very, very well at the time but I just couldn't get the words out of my mouth. I physically couldn't explain how blood flows through the heart, even though I knew it off my heart backwards so, so well, but I was just so stressed. Um, I was like shaking, I was sweating. I couldn't think of the heart. I couldn't picture it in my head. All I could focus on was how embarrassing the situation was. And that really screwed up my interview experience. It ended up going really, really badly. And of course I didn't get an offer. I feel like I've rambled on a little bit too much. Let's get right into this video about how to cope with stress before an interview and how to deal with your nerves. So the very first thing that I wanna say and what to me I honestly think is the most important is that you wanna be prepared. Before you go to your interview, you wanna know what kinds of questions are gonna be asked. You wanna know what's probably gonna come up. And actually interestingly, enough, I got a message from one of my followers on Instagram. I think it was for Sheffield saying that they had sent them the questions that were going to come up on the MMI interview. And they did that so that students wouldn't have a prepared answer. They would be able to see the question, really think about what it is that motivates them to do medicine or what it is that they liked about their work experience and give that answer in the interview. So I thought that was really interesting. And I think medical schools will probably be moving towards that in the future, letting their students see the questions so that they don't just prepare random ready-made answers. Anyway, I keep on rambling <laughs> back to the tips. So the first thing is to be prepared. If you Google um, like King's College London medical school interview questions or Imperial medical questions or whatever, you will get a list of questions that are very likely to come up in your interview. For example, why do you wanna be a doctor? Why do you wanna study medicine? Uh, what about this medical school makes you want to be here or makes you wanna apply here? Tell me about your work experience. These questions are almost guaranteed to be asked at your interview. So you better have a really good answer. You better have thought about it in detail. You better have practiced saying that answer out loud and you better be ready to give that answer in an interview. 
It may sound cheesy, but feeling confident in your ability to answer questions is one of the most important things. You wanna know your main stories off by heart. You wanna know your reflections off by heart. You wanna know the main points that you took away from each of your work experiences. You wanna be able to describe those and share those in vivid detail in a way that is concise but important to the interviewer so that they know what it is that makes you a good medical school candidate. And I've made several videos on this topic about how to prepare for medical school interviews, about finding the questions, writing out your answers, practicing talking them out loud. I'll link them in the description somewhere here on the screen. Definitely watch those, definitely do your preparation. It's super important. Before my King's College London interview, I had prepared for all of my Canadian interview exams. I had also done and prepared for the Bristol Medical School interview. So when my KCL interview came around, I honestly felt ready to answer any question that was gonna get thrown at me. And in fact, every question that they asked me at the KCL interview, I had done some variation of. I had already answered that question. I had already said it out loud. So I knew exactly what I wanted to say. I was just a matter of going through the stations and saying it out loud. Anyway, so preparation is number one, make sure you prepare. Number two, and I say this to everyone who sends me messages on Instagram saying, Nasser, karma medic, you know, what do I do? I'm really, really stressed, my interview's tomorrow. I always say the same thing. And I say, well, I say two things, but the first thing is, make sure that you try and treat the interview as a casual conversation, as opposed to like a formal interrogation. Remember that the interviewers, they just wanna know more about you. They wanna know who you are, why you are such a great candidate, why you're gonna be a good addition to their medical school they just they really when it comes down to it they just want to learn more about you so if you take the process a little bit more casually if you treat it as a conversation and you loosen up a little bit then you're really gonna have an easier time giving across that information and you're gonna create better rapport with the interviewer they're gonna think more nice things about you you're gonna be able to tell them more about yourself and it's just gonna go a lot better also a quick side note you are definitely going to loosen up as the stations go by I remember in my first station I was still really nervous. I was like shaking a little bit. But then by the last station, I had a much more relaxed posture. I was sitting back, talking to the interviewer. We were smiling, laughing. We even told some jokes at the end when we ran out of time. Uh, no, when we ran out of time. When we finished all the questions that they wanted to ask me at that station. So really, you do loosen up over time and everything just becomes better. Tip number three is the evening or the afternoon, the day before your actual interview and the morning of just really don't do anything. Don't study, don't cram, don't go over the stories again in your head. Just take it easy, relax. At this point, you've probably been studying or preparing for like a week or two, maybe even more. You've done a lot of work. And if you keep on studying till the last second, I know at least for me that that really stresses me out and that makes me confused and makes me self doubt and think that I'm not prepared enough. So really just the day before, you know, take it off. Watch your favorite movie, watch your favorite YouTube videos, watch your favorite or listen to your favorite book, listen to music, whatever it is, just keep yourself calm, relax yourself. Don't put any additional stress on yourself right before the interview. At this point, you know everything that you're gonna know and you just have to do your best. If you do wake up in the morning and you know that there's a couple of things you wanna quickly brush over to refresh your memory or keep them nice and close to the forefront of your mind that's totally fine obviously like make sure you cover the things that you want to cover if that's what makes you comfortable but what I'm trying to say is don't cram or stress really hard the night before or the morning of it's better to just take it easy and keep yourself your mind and your body calm like I mentioned before I'm very much like a sweaty person a shaky person I get quite nervous around interviews formal presentations and anything like that and I want to touch on that a little bit so I'm someone who gets like really red in the face I get really sweaty etc etc I've been over this a million times I found that the best way to cope with that to deal with that foreign interview situation is just to fully acknowledge that that is what is going on if when I was in the interview, I started sweating or I knew that I was red in the face because I could feel the heat on my cheeks, then that would just make me way more stressed out. I would start focusing on the fact of what my appearance is, what I'm looking like, instead of the actual content that I'm trying to deliver. So I knew that there was no way of me getting around this. If I'm gonna have an interview, I'm going to get red in the face. So I just acknowledged it. I came to terms with that fact. And I realized that the interviewers know that this is gonna happen to a lot of students and they don't care. They care about what's coming out of your mouth, the actual content and substance that you're delivering to them. They don't care if you get red in the face or if you're sweaty or if your voice is a little bit shaky. Those are fine. Interviewers know that students are going to be nervous and it's okay. So just coming to terms, coming to grips or whatever the phrase is with the fact that I was gonna get red in the face just made me feel a lot better about the whole situation. Tip number five that I want to cover is exercise. Now exercise for me has been a great 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 stress reliever over my university years. I understand that not everyone wants to exercise and different people have different forms of exercise that they like but if you enjoy going to the gym, if you enjoy going for a run or even just doing like pull-ups, push-ups or sit-ups in your home, I find that really helps get rid of stress. It takes all of the 
like mental stress that you have in your body and it lets it out in a physical way. Kind of sounds stupid and cheesy, but it really, really works. Okay, now on the day of the actual interview, if you're able to bring a friend or a family member or a significant other, I find that that can actually really, really help. Of course, it depends on the person, but if you're someone who feels like you might be more comfortable with someone else, then just do it. Ask someone to come, ask them to do a favor for you and to come with you. I know that before my interview for Bristol, my girlfriend came with me and before my interview for King's College London, I had my sister come with me. And just for those like 20 minutes, half an hour before the actual interview, having someone to talk to who you're familiar with, who you're comfortable with, can really, really help ease your nerves. If you don't have someone with you or if that's something that you don't prefer, then I would definitely recommend just listening to some music, walking around, it looks like my camera stopped recording halfway through that video. I think what I was talking about was that if you can bring a significant other, a family member or a friend with you to the interview, then you should go for it. Don't feel shy or feel embarrassed about asking someone to come with you or having someone accompany you when you're there. Even if it's your mom, your dad, your sister, whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable. If you think that you're going to be able to relax a little bit more, if you have someone to talk to about random things just to calm your mind and ease yourself before the interview, then just do it. The most important thing is that you feel best prepared for the interview setting. My next tip is slightly related to the previous one, and it's that when you're waiting to go in for the actual interview, when you're there sitting with all of the other candidates, if you're someone who feels like you don't wanna make small talk or you don't wanna talk to anyone else in the room, then don't. Don't feel obliged to talk to other interviewees or any people there as part of the administration or anything like that. If you wanna just listen to your music, listen to your audiobook, or just stare at the wall, then you do you. Don't feel obliged to make small talk or anything like that. I know that it definitely helped me. I didn't mind making conversation with anyone who was there, just sort of helped me get my mind off of what was happening and make me forget that I'm actually about to do one of the most important interviews of my life. Um, but you know, for some people that doesn't work and they just want their own alone time. So if, if you are that person, don't feel obliged to talk to anyone else. Give yourself some space, be by yourself and try and calm yourself down. Now, another tip that I wanna to touch upon is about how you dress. And I don't wanna talk about this tip because uh, you need to dress a certain way or you need to be super, super formal or uh, smart casual, business casual, whatever. The reason that I wanna talk about dress is that you wanna feel confident in whatever it is that you are wearing. If you're wearing something that you feel you look a little bit odd in or is uncomfortable, then that's something that you might be thinking about throughout the interview process. And that's the last thing that you want on your mind. Whatever it is that you decide to wear to the interview, make sure that it's something that you feel confident in. I know for me, when I went to that interview, it was like, I was wearing one of the first suits that I had ever worn and I thought I looked so good, I felt so confident, I was really happy with the color, I was happy with the tie, I was happy with my shoes and that really gave me a lot of confidence. It made, it made me not have to worry about and think about what it is that I was wearing and I could focus on just delivering my information and my content in a good way to the interviewers. But just make sure that whatever it is that you do decide to go in, you will feel comfortable in. Lastly, I know you've probably heard this a million times before, but I'm just gonna say it because it is really important. It's that once you finish one interview station, then it doesn't really matter how badly it went or how good it went. You just need to forget about it and focus on the next station. For one of my interviews, one of the stations, I totally messed it up. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I was talking about. I was just trying to BS my way through it and blast out the five or six or seven minutes, whatever it was. Um, but when it was finished, I knew I had completely screwed up that station. But if you have seven or eight or nine or 10 stations, it doesn't matter if you've screwed up one of those stations. You just need to focus on the next ones because no interviewers talk to each other about that. No one else knows what happened. It's just you. So if you can get past that mental block, put what happened behind you and move on to the next station, that's gonna help you a lot in succeeding in the next ones. All right, guys. And I think that's all of the tips that I wanted to cover and tell you guys. I'm only here in Jordan for a couple more days and then I'm gonna fly to Greece where my family is so that we can spend New Year's together. I'm also gonna be seeing a lot of my friends from high school there. Really looking forward to it. And I've actually got a progress test when I get back to England early in January, which is what I should be studying for right now instead of making this video. That's what I'm gonna do after I finish this video. I'm gonna go study for progress test number two. I'll show you guys what I'm currently studying right now actually. Um, I just made a table of different uh, induction agents and opioids kind of looks like this. I don't know how clearly you can see that on the screen. Different drugs, mode of action, use pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, different drugs in the accident and emergency room, self-harm, suicide, delirium in patients, 
um, all kinds of really interesting stuff that you will all get to do once you're in medical school. Anyway, I've rambled a bunch in this video. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep telling me if you're getting offers. Nothing makes me happier than to hear that news. If you wanna ask me any questions or communicate with me or whatever, follow me on Instagram. If this video has helped you, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos from me. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.